Hi there, my name's Chris. I'm one of the medical students here at Newcastle University. As a first year medical student who joined in September, this video is just a bit about some of my experiences at Newcastle. Uh, what's gone well, what's the adjustment period has been like from A-levels um, to university, um, and as well as myth busting some of the things in medicine um, and talking about my experience. The, the first and most obvious change going from A-levels to studying medicine was the format of, of teaching. Um, I'd come from a sixth form, so a classroom, uh, to a lecture hall that could see 300 to 400 people. So there's quite a big change in terms of the content and how it's structured and how it's taught to you. Um, so definitely the thing that I had to adjust to uh, primarily was how was I gonna study and what different study skills I'd need to learn in order to cover the content. Throughout these months, we've had our first uh, assessment um, and that was really more of a formative assessment to see if we've been able to adapt to the new style of content. Um, but I'd say that was the most uh, drastic change that's happened since I've come into medicine. I think that so far in the course, um, learning anatomy and, and physiology, uh, essentially where things are and how they work, is really quite interesting. Um, I had quite a lot of questions in A level when it came to how things work. And I felt that a lot of those questions weren't really answered. Um, but going into medicine, I can now explain how does caffeine stop you from being tired? Or why do we assume that same hunched over position when we're trying to breathe uh, really hard after a race? Or why do we even get tired after a race? There's all these kinds of relevant points um, that the course relates the material to. Um, and I found that really satisfying that those questions that I had uh, in year 13 and year 12 were kind of finally answered uh, in a way that I, I just love looking at some of the research that you can do whilst at university. Um, something that I just want to know some more information about if I'm going to do research in my later years or over the summer. Um, so I attended a talk uh, which basically looked at all these different uh, research funds and research op research opportunities that we could get involved with as students, what's required of us, uh, how many hours a week that would entail and some of the older students uh, would give advice on how their projects went. There's a lot of support available um, so I talked to uh, my peer mentor um, and he gave me some of the study tips that I needed to kind of help that transition going from a classroom to a lecture hall. Um, and once that transition period was over, um, I found that I actually did have a lot of free time. And that's the first myth that I want to talk about when studying medicine. You do have still a lot of free time. Um, and the school actually um, supports you in trying to find activities or societies or pursue your hobbies whilst you're also studying medicine. For example, gymnastics. Um, I've started, I'm a bit late for gymnastics, but I started doing some gymnastics and going to some of their um, weekly training sessions. Um, I started uh, doing boxing as well, which I really enjoy. Um, and most importantly, I've been able to maintain a lot of my hobbies uh, that I had uh, during A-levels and during my time at sixth form. Uh, meeting with friends has been really easy due to my accommodation and all the students being quite close to each other. So I've been able to go out, I've been able to enjoy um, things like freshers um, and just being able to blow off steam at the end of the, at the weekend. I think that being able to manage a workload means that you can go out and you still do have the free time. Uh, unlike what everyone else says, you still do have free time as a medical student. 